Level zero. You wake up, no cough, no aches, no fever. Your breath is smooth, your muscles cooperate. Your appetite, normal. You don't even think about it, because why would you? This is level zero, the absence of disease, a body in a quiet symphony. It's not that there's nothing happening. There's always something happening. Cells dying, replacing themselves, immune scouts patrolling the bloodstream like night shift security guards. But there's no battle right now, no symptoms, no invaders. You might have picked up a virus yesterday on the subway rail or the doorknob at work, but your body neutralized it before it even had a chance to unpack its suitcase. A macrophage dissolved it. A T cell flagged the threat and moved on. No alarms, no panic, no symptoms. You are, for all intents and purposes, healthy. But not because your body's empty, it's just balanced. Microbes live in you, trillions of them. Bacteria on your skin, yeast in your gut. Viruses embedded in your genome, lying dormant like forgotten code. But they're not hurting you. They're part of the deal. Level zero isn't about being sterile. It's about homeostasis, that calm equilibrium where systems self-regulate without asking for your input. No coughs, no chills, no inflammation. You don't appreciate it until it's gone. Learn to love level zero. Sleep, hygiene, and stress control aren't self-care. They're insurance policies against escalation. Level one, silent infiltration. You feel off, but barely. Maybe a tickle in the throat. Maybe a dull fatigue that hangs around like brain fog, but you write it off. Didn't sleep well. Allergies, long day. You keep moving. But inside, something's brewing. Level one is where pathogens slip past your first line of defense. Maybe a cold virus made it past the mucous membranes. Maybe a foodborne bacteria snuck through your stomach acid. The invader's in. But the war hasn't started yet. Your immune system notices. Quietly, antibodies begin to rally. Cytokines whisper, not scream. There's no fever yet, no cough. But your white blood cells are lining up like sentries, preparing for something that might happen. Sometimes the body contains the threat before symptoms even start. You never knew you were infected. You just had an off day. Other times, this is the prelude. The moment before the symptoms crash the party. Level 1 disease isn't dangerous, but it's a turning point. The body's still winning, but the enemy's made landfall. And sometimes it's not a virus at all. Maybe your body's reacting to pollen, or mold, or stress. The symptoms are real, but the cause isn't infectious. The disease isn't from the outside, it's a false alarm from inside. Either way, it's subtle. You function, you go to work, you might even go to the gym. But your body knows something's wrong, it just hasn't told you the full story yet. Pay attention to subtle changes. Hydration, rest, and nutrition at this stage can stop progression. Treat feeling off like a warning light, not a background detail. Level two, the body sounds the alarm. Now it's official. Your throat is sore, your nose is congested, you sneeze, you cough. Maybe you have a fever, the body's version of cranking up the thermostat to make it uncomfortable for the invader. Level two is the classic I'm sick moment, but still manageable. You're home from work, lying in bed with tissues and soup, you scroll through your phone between naps. You're not in danger. You're just miserable. What's happening under the hood is a full-scale immune response. White blood cells are attacking infected tissue. Inflammatory proteins are signaling for help. Your body is spending a lot of energy, not just fighting the infection, but keeping your systems online during the fight. You feel tired because your body is reallocating resources. Muscles don't get energy. Digestion slows down. Your brain feels foggy. You're in conservation mode. Diseases at this level include the common cold, mild flu, seasonal allergies, or low-grade infections. You're not hospitalized. You're not panicking. But your quality of life? Downhill. You treat the symptoms, ibuprofen, fluids, rest. But the real battle is microscopic. You're not healing because of the pills. You're healing because your body has memorized the playbook from millions of years of immunological evolution. Level two is annoying, exhausting, and very human. 
Respect the immune system. Support it. Don't suppress it. At this stage, rest is productivity. It gives your body the bandwidth to recover. Level 3. Systems under stress. You're not just sick now, you're affected. Daily function becomes difficult. The fever spikes. The pain intensifies. Symptoms start interfering with basic tasks. You're curled up on the bathroom floor or shaking under the covers. Maybe there's nausea. Maybe there's pain behind your eyes. This is level three, where the disease is no longer content staying in its lane. If it started as a respiratory virus, now it's in your sinuses. Your ears hurt. Your lungs feel tight. If it began as a stomach bug, now you're dehydrated, dizzy, disoriented. The immune system is in overdrive, and in some cases, that becomes part of the problem. The inflammation meant to kill pathogens also damages healthy tissue. You might have a sinus infection, bronchitis, influenza, stomach flu, or even a mild case of pneumonia. Some bacterial infections, if untreated, begin to invade adjacent systems. You may visit a clinic now. You need more than fluids, maybe antibiotics, maybe breathing treatments. Maybe fourth hydration. You're not dying, but you're also not recovering on your own anymore. At level three, the line between home treatment and medical intervention starts to blur. The disease has momentum now, and if it's not contained, it escalates. This is where complications start to enter the picture. Not because the disease is designed to kill, but because your body is straining to keep up. Don't tough it out blindly. Seek help. Early intervention at this stage prevents hospitalizations. Listen to your body when it says, this is too much. Level four, organ systems begin to struggle. This is the level where disease starts making permanent threats. We're talking about pneumonia that spreads into the bloodstream. Untreated diabetes causing blurred vision and kidney strain. Autoimmune flares inflaming the joints or heart. Infections that cross the blood-brain barrier. At level four, your body is in crisis mode. You're likely in a hospital bed now, maybe hooked to oxygen, maybe being monitored hourly, blood tests, imaging scans, four lines. Doctors don't just treat the disease anymore. They manage the collateral damage it's causing. You may feel delirious, confused. You might not even remember being admitted. Your organs are still working, but they're struggling. Your liver is overtaxed. Your kidneys are filtering waste under stress. Your lungs may be inflamed. Diseases at this level include severe COVID-19, acute pancreatitis, advanced Lyme disease, autoimmune conditions like lupus and flare, and drug-resistant infections. The immune system is no longer enough on its own. It needs external help, steroids, antivirals, dialysis, respiratory support, just to stabilize. Even after recovery, there may be lasting damage. Scarring in the lungs, nerve pain, lingering fatigue, your body might win the war, but not without casualties. Level four reminds us that biology is delicate. It doesn't take much. A missed diagnosis, a delayed treatment, a strain of bacteria one step too resistant to push the system over the edge. Know your medical history. Chronic conditions can turn minor infections into major threats. Prevention and early care aren't just helpful. They're life-saving. Level five. Now the body stops whispering and starts screaming. This is no longer a sniffle you walk off or a rash you ignore. This is disease as a system-wide disruption, where your organs begin talking to each other in panicked tones, where symptoms don't just localize, they collaborate. A good example, typhoid fever. Caused by Salmonella typhi, it's a bacteria that doesn't settle for the stomach. It wants the bloodstream, it wants the whole body. You get a high fever, 104 degrees Fahrenheit and rising, coupled with weakness, loss of appetite, and delirium. It's not just a digestive problem, it's a full body siege. At this level, diseases move from acute nuisances to conditions that alter daily life. Think hepatitis A, think dengue, think malaria. These aren't abstract words anymore, they're real life enemies that bring days, sometimes weeks, of dysfunction. You sweat through soaked sheets, you hallucinate, you can't eat, 
You can't sleep. You're aware of your body in ways you never wanted to be. Your immune system? It's in overdrive. White blood cells are multiplying rapidly. Inflammatory proteins are racing through your bloodstream. Fever is no longer a side effect. It's a strategy, trying to cook the invader alive. But that inflammation, that response? It's a double-edged sword, because now your own defenses begin to cause collateral damage. Blood vessels leak, tissues swell, organs lose efficiency. Suddenly, your liver might forget how to process toxins. Your kidneys might stop filtering properly. And yet, this level is survivable. With medical help, antibiotics, antivirals, supportive fluids. You're in the zone where a trip to the ER matters, where treatment within 24 to 48 hours can mean the difference between recovery and collapse. This is the level where hygiene, vaccines, and rapid diagnostics show their true power. Typhoid and hepatitis A, both preventable. We're no longer just managing disease, we're learning how to stay two steps ahead. Level six. This is where your body becomes a battlefield and the battlefield becomes fogged with smoke. Disease here doesn't just disrupt, it dismantles. It takes systems apart and turns the debris into new symptoms. You're no longer fighting a localized invader. You're trying to stop a coordinated biological ambush. Tuberculosis, not the mild cough it once seemed, but the full-blown cavitary pulmonary nightmare version, where bacteria burrow into lung tissue and build little fortresses called granulomas inside your body. These aren't just nests, they're barricades surrounded by dying cells, immune debris, and scar tissue. Your lungs? They wheeze like torn accordion bellows. Blood might speckle the handkerchief. Night sweats drench your sheets. And it doesn't stop there. TB can jump ship, target your spine, your kidneys, even your brain. Or let's talk about viral hemorrhagic fevers. Ebola. Marburg. At this level, viruses don't just infect, they liquefy. Internal bleeding, vomiting blood, diarrhea that won't stop. You bleed from your gums, your eyes, your intestines. Organs begin shutting down, not just from the virus, but from vascular collapse. It's as if the body forgets how to be a container. Systemic inflammation becomes a wildfire. Your blood vessels become too leaky. You lose blood pressure. Oxygen doesn't reach the organs in time. And your immune system? It starts misfiring, not because it's weak, but because it's now panicking. It's shooting everything in sight, pathogen or not. Medical intervention is a race against time. Multi-organ support, massive hydration, electrolyte balancing, constant oxygen support, isolation, antivirals, and often experimental treatments. The mortality rate? It's no longer single digits. It's coin toss territory. But even here, there's hope. HIV used to be a death sentence. Now, with antiretroviral therapy, patients can live decades. Ebola outbreaks that once had 90% fatality now drop closer to 25 to 30% in areas with strong medical response. This is the level that redefined medicine. Global health infrastructure, pandemic preparedness, and rapid response vaccine development they all sharpened because of level six diseases. We didn't just fight back, we evolved our playbook. Level seven, this is the level that changes the world. Because when disease hits here, it doesn't just affect individuals, it fractures societies. Let's talk about pandemics, the 1918 flu, COVID-19, SARS. These aren't just infections, they're events. Historic rewirings of economies, institutions, and how humans interact. Take COVID-19-SARS-CoV-2, a virus so small it fits inside a droplet, yet it disrupted 8 billion lives. At this level, disease becomes social, political, economic. Borders close, schools shut down, hospitals overflow, supply chains buckle, funerals become video calls. And biologically, it's no less savage. A virus like this enters your respiratory system, but it doesn't stop there. It hijacks your cells, makes them churn out copies. It confuses your immune response, tricking it into delay, then inciting overreaction. You might feel fine on day two and be gasping for air by day nine. The worst part? The spectrum. Some people, asymptomatic, 
others? In the ICU on ventilators, drowning in their own inflammation, it's not just lungs. COVID hits the heart, the kidneys, the brain. Blood clots become landmines inside your bloodstream. It turns the body into a domino system. One system failing can trigger the next. And this is just one example. Level 7 diseases include the 2002 SARS outbreak, the MERS virus, new flu strains, even some engineered pathogens on watch lists. What makes a level 7 disease? It's not just the death toll. It's the unpredictability, the speed, the burden on healthcare, the disruption of normalcy. At this point, mitigation strategies become global. Vaccine development ramps up at historic speeds. mRNA vaccines are born. Contact tracing, genomic sequencing, wastewater surveillance, all jump from theory to necessity. And culturally, something else shifts. We begin to see disease not just as something we treat, but something we prevent collectively. Mask wearing, social distancing, remote work. These aren't just public health tools, they're social adaptations. Level seven diseases forced a new medical revolution. Fast track vaccine pipelines, remote diagnostics, digital epidemiology, but even more, they reminded us that global health is a shared responsibility. No one's immune until everyone is. With this, we come to an end. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next.